Yes, I'm afraid this is the latest wheeze from the SNP. They've lost their leader, they've lost their chief executive, and they have also this week lost the plot. She has uh, painted me as a, a school mom this week, so I shall role play, Mr. Speaker, and give her an arithmetic lesson. The SNP have had to go to Manchester in order to find someone willing to take on the task. Presumably, the Honourable Lady would view this as offshore for some time now. Uh, BBC Politics Scotland has resembled an episode of Taggart. If the candidates were called Mo, Larry and Curly, it couldn't get any more slapstick. An individual this week, Fergus, who is from Inverness, who's worked in the legal profession many years and will shortly be drawing his pension, is really dismayed at what is happening in Scotland. I look forward to next week, what those excuses might be, the execution of Mary Queen of Scots, uh, the Highland clearances, the Hundred Years' War, an SNP local authority who this week seems to have decided their main mission isn't the emptying the bins or uh, sorting out education, it's actually trying to ban bouncy oh, castles. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the most outrageous claims about the supposed negative impacts of leaving the EU, made by the most fanatical rejoiners, cannot compare to the damage that will be done to the UK's internal market, to producers and businesses in Scotland, and to the cost of living for the Honourable Gentleman's constituents by the SNP's DRS, Deposit Return Scheme. In a few months' time, it appears the only way you're going to be able to buy Scottish produce, if it is contained in glass or plastic, is to come south of the border. Such items in their land of origin will be so rare, well, as, as rare as Labour MPs. And I would urge them to listen to, in all seriousness, communities and producers in Scotland and producers smarter scheme. On these and all things, they should be driven by what is in the Scottish people's interests. Uh, the party's leadership contest going on at the moment is an opportunity for a reset and a fresh start and to end the slopey-shouldered separatism that has done such a great disservice to such a great nation. And I would suggest to all candidates in the SNP's leadership contest a much better DRS initiative would be to desist ruining Scotland. Oh, thank you, Mr Speaker. Mr Speaker, I want it placed on record that uh, the Honourable Lady has asked me three questions. And I anticipate I may have more questions from her honourable uh, colleagues. As a consequence, I'd like it placed on record that my space is no longer safe, um, but I will soldier on. And can I just welcome the SNP's U-turn on allowing media access to their leadership uh, contest hustings and not restricting them to just one uh, question uh, uh, for the candidates. Can I uh, thank the Honourable Lady for doing the homework that I set her last week? I take it all back. She's had a really productive week um, figuring out how to square the establishment of the Scottish pound with joining the euro. Um, we, we very much uh, appreciate that. But I would just again say to the SNP, these are not the issues that are facing the Scottish people on their list of priorities. They are worried about health, they're worried about poor education standards, they're worried about their bins being collected. And I would just say, we had a, a, an amazing situation last night where the, the Deputy uh, Speaker had to include herself and the tellers in the count to make this House core it. I mean, members on the opposition benches and on these benches are so the, the, the debate is so far removed from the reality of what is happening in Scotland that people are not even prepared to show up to disagree with the with the Scottish nationalists. And I would just ask them to drag themselves back to the real world. I'm glad to hear about the paper that is being produced. I look forward to it, including the almost $1.5 billion that has been committed by the UK Government for 12 city and growth deals covering every part of Scotland, the 
42 million for Scottish fisheries, the uh, 1.9 billion for farmers and land managers over the next three years, the 52 million to support the establishment of two Scottish uh, green free ports, the 170 million levelling up fund for eight Scottish projects, and of course uh, the support given for the 1,700 jobs through the fantastic 3.7 billion Type 26 shipbuilding programme that the AE govern, which I particularly approve of. I look forward to all those things being included in their paper. I can't imagine why the SNP don't want to talk about shipbuilding. Yeah. This week we have heard from Professor Keith Hartley, a defence expert, who said that warship construction would grind to a halt and thousands of jobs would be lost if Scotland were to leave the EU. He also warned that an, it was unlikely an independent Scotland would have a particularly large navy. And based on the SNP's performance in procuring ferries, I think he's probably yeah. right. Um, I have often spoken about the SNP's reality gap, the chasm between what the SNP continually talks about and the concerns of the Scottish people. And Scotland's Auditor General has now pointed to an implementation gap, the abyss between the SNP's rhetoric and the reality of their delivery on the ground. I would suggest that, and she might, I've been suggesting a bit of homework for the, the uh, Honourable Lady uh, every week, and her homework I'm setting her today for the debate on Monday is that, is just to think about if you're so concerned about balancing the books and balancing the budget uh, of the Scottish Government, why not drop the Constitution budget and plans for a second referendum and focus on the NHS instead. The SNP try to paint themselves as the defenders of democracy despite ignoring the results of referendum and despite then voting to deny the whole of the UK and the people of Scotland their say on whether to be part of the EU. I've brought that Hansard with me as well. I'll remind the House that the SNP were the only party to vote against the EU referendum. Despite believing passionately in the Union of the United Kingdom, I and members on this side of the House voted to give the Scottish people a say. The Scottish uh, government is one of the most, and Parliament is one of the most powerful devolved administrations in the world. With huge authority, the SNP have done their best not uh, to take up. With responsibilities, the SNP have done their best to shirk. And with the largest budget it has ever had, that they have done their best to squander. The reason why Scotland has low job creation, its education is the lowest PISA ranking since that measure was created. 700 fewer police officers than a year ago, and the worst A&E uh, wait times on record, and that the Honourable Lady's own constituency has the lowest funding settlement per person in Scotland, is not the UK Government, or the Secretary of State, or the Supreme Court, or the good people of England, Wales and Northern Ireland, nor Brexit, nor Britain. It is her party, the SNP, and their obsession with issues that the Scottish people wish they would leave aside and focus on what matters to them. She has uh, painted me as a, a schoolmarm this week, so I shall, I shall uh, role play, Mr. Speaker, and give her an arithmetic lesson because the Scottish Government this week have uh, complained uh, that they are having to make a billion cuts, um, despite the fact that they have 20. But, uh, 26% more funding per head than uh, England. And I'm going to um, just suggest to her that she might like to um, uh, just some suggestions about how she might find that. She might cancel the 20 million on a referendum, which isn't happening, or the 9 million on their eight embassies that they run. Or perhaps she could have looked at the, uh, the 300 million they've spent so far on two ferries, which are five years late and 150 million over budget. Or the 52.4 million on the collapsed Bifab company, or the 5 million on climate change reparations, or the nearly 600 million they spent to bail out Sanjeev Gupta's uh, smelting business, or the half a million pounds wasted on publicly owned uh, energy company that never happened. That adds up to a billion. But instead, the Scottish National Party are going to have to cut frontline services and capital projects to balance their books. As the Auditor General has pointed out this week, uh, he's lifted the veil on the scale 
of the SNP's uh, financial incompetence. I think the people of Scotland deserve better than that. And normally, I'm, I'm pretty, uh, 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 pretty brutal with, uh, uh, with his uh, colleague who isn't here today, but uh, in the Christmas spirit, as well as outlining all the rational arguments I do every week for why the U- we are better uh, together as the United Kingdom, the, the £2,000 tax dividend, the strength of our defence and security, our global reach, our ability to influence the support in a crisis situation whether it is uh, the cost of living issues or uh, if, for example, um, help was needed with the ongoing situation in Shetland, uh, Her Majesty's Armed Forces, uh, sorry, His Majesty's Armed Forces are there um, to, uh, to step up and help. But I think sometimes we forget that the arguments for the union are not just about uh, ones that appeal up here in the head, they're also ones that appeal uh, to the heart. And the, why so many people in this place uh, object to the SNP's uh, obsession uh, with independence? Is it because it will rip a family of nations and the families that live in those nations apart? And uh, uh, that is my Christmas message uh, to him and his colleagues this year. The SNP are asking me questions about campaign (laughs) finance. Um, So let's just start with uh, the uh, Scottish Nationalists um, deciding to ignore uh, other private sector firms and give um, uh, a, a contract to a smelting business, support to bail out a smelting business, to the tune of £5 million per job to be retained, which then were not uh, retained, who just happened to be a sponsor of the SNP's party conference. I, there is so much more material, but I don't want to uh, um, uh, detain uh, Mr Speaker. Um, so I, I welcome any such investigations into uh, such, uh, such financial matters. Um, I had hoped at the start of the new year that uh, uh, the Scottish Nationalists might like to focus on the issues of concern to the Scottish people. I wonder what would happen if they focused on, uh, for example, the tragic uh, situation of addiction in Scotland, uh, which currently has the largest drug-related deaths of anywhere in Europe and the largest alcohol-related deaths of anywhere in the UK. Imagine if they made that their mission to sort that out this year, instead of spending so much time, as they have in the first debate they've held in this year, uh, on uh, independence. Or indeed, if that doesn't appeal to them, how about improving education, reducing the attainment gap that they have widened, uh, or waiting times at uh, A&E departments which are at record levels, or cutting violent crime, or, or bringing forward their broadband rollout to rural areas, some of which are having to wait till 2027. It is my wish for the new year that the SNP start to focus on these issues. Uh, Scotland needs them to. I hope that one day the SNP will make their questions relevant to the issues facing the people of Scotland on health care, on education, on all of those uh, things that they want their uh, government to grip and uh, not be uh, so focused on uh, constitutional reform, important though that is uh, to uh, their party. Um, She talks about unintended consequences and I would say to her in all seriousness, you don't You don't have to believe in the union of the United Kingdom to recognise that we all have a duty of care to every citizen uh, in every part of the UK, no matter which part of the UK we are from and we represent. And that means having a regard for the social fabric and the social contract uh, of the UK. The power she refers to has been in existence for 25 years, nearly 25 years. It's only marginally younger than the deputy leader of her group, and it is the first time that we have used uh, this power. It's not like we have just discovered it down the back of the sofa. What has happened is a significant and rare thing, and it's a serious thing. Uh, these powers were created as part of the devolution process. Um, in part because of the potential of such a scenario. And it's because we've been placed in this position where the bill would have serious implications for the working of the Equalities Act um, that we have done what we have done. It would have been better if the SNP had had regard to those unintended consequences. It's not as if they weren't aware. The Minister for Women and Equalities raised this in correspondence and in meetings with their Cabinet Secretary uh, for Social Justice, and officials had been raising it uh, for some time. And given where we are and the worry 
the worry that this will cause people, I hope that we can get this situation resolved swiftly and in a spirit of cooperation and pragmatism. And our citizens, including those who are trans, deserve that. Um, her final comment was about blinkered hatred, and I would say um, uh, that uh, the SNP ought to check uh, their own behaviour before they start pointing the finger at other people on that front. I do wish the SNP had the gift to see themselves as, as others see them, or as the uh, Audit Office of Scotland and the Scottish taxpayers are seeing them. When the week that uh, um, the Auditor General, um, Stephen Boyle, uh, called for greater transparency um, about the colossal underspend in their budget. Very often they come to this House, Mr Speaker, uh, asking for uh, additional funding from the UK Government, but they have underspent their budget by nearly two billion. And I'm sorry to say, or put it another way, that's 7,142 nurses. Um, and the areas of underspent where I'm sorry to say in education and skills, the economy, net zero uh, and transport, and also money that was given to the uh, the COVID uh, response. And I would say to the Honourable Lady, because she paints uh, a particular picture of Scotland that, that I do not recognise and the people she represents that, that I do not recognise, um, I would say to the Honourable Lady that she is uh, governing a great and dynamic country. It's a country that stiffens the backbone and reinforces the soul. It's the nation of Fleming, Dunlop, McAdam, Watt, Telford. It's the nation of the Argyles and Black Watch crossing the Rhine, of the Scots Guards at Tumbledown, of Shimmy Lovett's commandos securing Pegasus Bridge. The taxes sitting in the Scottish Government's accounts not being spent on education are paid for by grain farmers, not grievance farmers by incredible communities and creatives. And the people that, the Honourable La that elected the Honourable Lady are incredibly resourceful, and they do not m match the SNP's vision of them as a nation of victims. They are a powerful force for good in the Union and the world. They march to the fife and drum, not the saddest tune played on the smallest violin. I clocked earlier uh, that the, the theme of the week for the SNP was, uh, was going to be Brexit, and the uh, the, lead, the, the Honourable Lady's uh, group leader made the same point as uh, she has today, yesterday, when he invoked a metaphor of uh, an SNP lifeboat, a uh, Brexit lifeboat, saving the good people of Scotland from, uh, from Brexit. I mean, leaving aside the fact, Mr Deputy Speaker, that any lifeboat procured by the, uh, the, the party opposite is likely to cost three times contract price and never materialises uh, based on their attempts to procure ferries, I would say that Scotland doesn't need such a lifeboat. Scotland needs a Scottish Government whose main modus operandi is not talking down its own nation. It needs a government that takes responsibility. And uh, she invites me to, uh, to talk about uh, uh, economics and uh, wishes ministers had uh, better economics uh, lessons. Uh, I would just point out to the Honourable Lady that uh, the Scottish Government haven't even managed to spend their own planned budget, having an underspend of, uh, of £2 billion. But leaving that aside, I, I do do my homework. I'm always interested to learn. And so I did happen to go on to the Scottish Government's own website to see what it says about the economy. And clearly, uh, the uh, growth levels have not been uh, as they have been in previous years. And I, I wanted to look up what they thought the reason for that was. And I say, I quote, it is due to the requirement for many industries to cease trading during the lockdown for COVID-19. Nothing about Brexit, Mr Deputy Speaker, or us rotters in the UK government. It is down to COVID, as the Honourable Lady uh, uh, knows very well. She also knows that the UK Prosperity Fund has maintained funding to Scotland post-Brexit. She also knows about the Edinburgh reforms, the fight on financial services uh, and markets bill on reforming Solvency II, and how much that will mean to financial services and uh, firms in her constituency. She also knows that exports in Scotland are up. Figures reported in autumn last year show they are up by three 
billion since 2018 in current prices. She knows how the green free ports will help drive growth, and she knows that shortly we will open up that enormous multi-trillion pound market uh, for producers in Scotland through our accession to CPTPP. The whole of the UK have been through the mill, but we are coming through it, and the future is bright. There are massive opportunities, and I would invite the lady to talk, the, uh, to talk those up and to talk her nation up. If the SNP were coaching the Scottish Six Nations team, they would have told them to stay in their dressing room and, uh, and have tied their laces together. And I would just encourage her to be a little more positive about the future, because her constituents should be.